Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are talking about new revelations about Apple's AI strategy and how it relates to what the other big tech companies are doing. Now for those paying attention, Apple has been the most quiet of the big tech companies when it comes to their strategy around generative AI. Indeed, at the beginning of June, Apple held its big worldwide developer conference where they unveiled their Vision Pro. Generative AI was conspicuously absent from that event, so much so that Wired's headline about it was Apple Ghosts the Generative AI Revolution. Wired writes, Yesterday, Apple announced new features powered by its neural engine hardware, like call screening that transcribes the first few words of a voicemail live so you can decide whether to pick up a call, but there was no mention of Generative AI during the two-hour worldwide developer conference keynote address. The only thing that came close was an update to a feature in iOS 17 that suggests the next word you might want to use when typing on an iPhone keyboard. First Mark Capital investor Matt Turk said, The reality is that Apple is a bit behind others like Microsoft and Google in generative AI, so it smartly chose to position itself as running its own race in AI, as opposed to trying to play catch up with others. Others have basically said, look, Apple is always late to the party. What matters is what they bring when they finally show up. However, we also learned a couple weeks ago that quietly, Apple had been doing more than it had appeared publicly when it came to generative AI tools. Bloomberg reported that Apple had been quietly testing internally something called Apple GPT. It was built on an LLM foundation that Apple called Ajax, and at the time of the report, internally people had been using it for a variety of different purposes. According to the reporting, however, Apple was very, very unclear about exactly what they wanted to do with it. This despite the fact that it had become a major effort with several teams collaborating on the project. Some of the issues included potential privacy concerns, as well as wanting not to just be another also ran. Bloomberg wrote, Behind the scenes, Apple has grown concerned about missing a potentially paramount shift in how devices operate. Generative AI promises to transform how people interact with phones, computers, and other technologies. And Apple's devices, which produce revenue of nearly $320 billion in the last fiscal year, could suffer if the company doesn't keep up with AI advances. That's why Apple began laying the foundation for AI services with the Ajax framework, as well as a ChatGPT-like tool for use internally. Now, at the time of this reporting, Apple employees said that the company's tool doesn't really have anything different from a novel feature perspective as compared to Bard, ChatGPT, or Bing. It didn't even really have a UX, being accessible only as a simple web application. Now, to get a sense of how much Apple's efforts in this space were anticipated, on this reporting alone, Apple's shares went up 2.3% to a new record high. What's more, Microsoft, who of course is OpenAI's biggest partner, went down 1% on the news. And as much as Tim Cook has tried to brush off questions around their AI strategy from the market, it seems increasingly like that is no longer viable given where Wall Street has its attention focused. Which brings us back to last week's earning call, where AI got a big center stage. One part of that was a pretty significant hint that Apple has been spending heavily on AI-related research and development. Apple reported that so far R&D costs have hit $22.61 billion for 2023. That figure is over $3 billion higher than the R&D spend was at this time last year. Cook pointed to generative AI as one of the big reasons. The CEO told Reuters, quote, We've been doing research across a wide range of AI technologies, including generative AI, for years. Obviously, we're investing a lot, and it is showing up in the R&D spending that you're looking at. What's more, Cook said during the earnings call that generative AI was, quote, absolutely critical to us, and that they viewed AI and machine learning as, quote, integral to virtually every product. Now, part of the reason that there may be a bit of a shift in the communication strategy around AI is the need to compensate for otherwise declining revenue and sales. Q3 earnings were down, and in particular, iPhone sales fell short of what analysts had been expecting. Outside of the earnings call, the other place that analysts are reading the tea leaves around Apple's AI strategy has to do with their hiring. Over the weekend, the Financial Times reported that Apple is seeking to bolster its expertise in generative AI on mobile devices. FT points out that Apple is hiring for dozens of roles across offices in California, Seattle, Paris, and Beijing to work on LLMs with a specific focus on compressing models so that they can run efficiently on mobile devices. There are a couple big benefits of that, which get to how many think Apple may be trying to distinguish its particular strategy. FT writes, The benefits of running AI software on phones without the need for an internet connection or to send data to the cloud are that apps can run more quickly and allow a user's data to be processed in a more secure and private way. One job posting is looking for a senior software engineer to, quote, implement features that compress and accelerate LLMs in our on-device inference engine. Another says that they're looking for someone to bring, quote, state-of-the-art foundation models to the phone in your pocket, enabling the next generation of machine learning-based experiences in a privacy-preserving way. 
Apple has, of course, made a huge investment over the last decade in being the big tech giant that cares about your actual privacy. It's a way to hit at competitors like Google and Facebook for their ad-driven models, which require, by definition, the capture and accessing of lots of information about users' preferences, behavior, and interests. Because Apple is selling devices and services, they don't require the same sort of data from users, and they've leaned into that trying to build products that are inherently more privacy-preserving. Now, one of the big ways that people see the AI space evolving is that instead of people just using ChatGPT or other third-party LLMs, it feels likely to many that we'll have some form of personalized model that's trained specifically on our particular data. You're already seeing startups try to build that now, such as Quiver, which I've talked about here before, and many think that Apple is in an extremely privileged place to potentially make a play in that area. That would certainly give it that differentiation that changes what it's offering as opposed to Google and Meta, who are developing their own foundation models, and Amazon, who's making a bet with their Bedrock service, that enterprises are going to want to have access to many different models that they can customize for whatever proprietary purposes they want to use them for. And so while everything isn't totally clear yet, you really are starting to see how different big tech companies' AI strategy is coming to the fore, and in particular, how it's changing or validating how they've operated in general. Microsoft is, of course, trying to integrate AI everywhere faster than anyone else in a way that, in some cases, takes advantage of the lock-in they already have with professional users, such as the $30 cost for Copilot inside the office suite, and in other cases is trying to use it as a way to leapfrog their products that have been behind, such as Bing AI, directly in the browser. Google is likewise trying to put AI everywhere and is in the midst of figuring out how effectively to disrupt itself by changing the search experience that has been core to the internet for so many years. Meta strategy is one of the most interesting in that it's a big shift to the open source world, where Meta is just constantly pushing foundation models and other models like Audiocraft, which I talked about last week, out into the public and trying to get people to build on top of them. Now, how much value that ultimately means accrues to Meta is, I think, an open question, but it's certainly notable as a strategic approach. Amazon is staying out of the fray of foundation model building and instead leaning hard into the idea that enterprises are going to live in a multi-model world. Bedrock is their approach to meet businesses where they actually are without forcing them into one domain or another. And then there's Apple. And so far, best we can tell, it seems like the play might be to take advantage of all the things that actual hardware devices allow for in terms of local data while still preserving privacy to offer that personalized LLM experience of the future. However, for now, that is all speculation, but if markets keep up pressure on Apple, we might get some more hints a little bit faster than Apple might otherwise be comfortable with. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching, and until next time, peace.